Hello and welcome back to 6502 assembly language on the Commodore 128. Um, I think this will be entry 15 in the series. Uh, 14 was kind of a one-off on the um, on the uh, what do you call them? the addressing modes of the 6502. Um, this time we're going back to the worm game that uh, we're working on in uh, the 13th video. So. Um, one thing I wanted to mention was when I started this series, um, I was talking just specifically about the 6502, and it's gradually morphed into um, Commodore 128 programming, basically because you have to program for some platform or another, and that's the one I'm familiar with. And I also realized after a while that practically no one else is doing that. There are people programming for the 64, and there's even kind of a resurgence of that, but there really isn't much out there um, of people doing anything new on the 128. Um, there is one other new channel that popped up um, this week called Nibbles and Bites that's going to be doing it. Um, but there really isn't too much out there, so I thought you know, I, I might start sort of emphasizing that side of it because I, I will be programmed for the 128 doing all this. Um, most of it I think you could convert to another 6502 machine like the Commodore 64 without too much trouble, but when it comes down to specific hardware registers, um, you know, memory configurations, things like that, there are going to be differences, and so um, this is all going to be targeted to the 128, which if you're using an emulator, you might as well use the 128 emulator <clears throat> if, you, if you're using Vice, because it is the most powerful of the machines that it emulates. As far as I know, I don't think it does the C65, which was going to be the next, kind of the next machine they're working on that was never actually produced. So, anyway, so back to the worm game. Uh, to continue on here, um, a couple a couple improvements I need to make before we start writing new code. Um, one that I noticed is a, is a real simple thing, but I noticed it after after I finished last time. Um, right down here when you're gonna load the same number into two registers like I do here it which happens sometimes like with zero when you just want to zero the registers um, it's actually faster instead of load what you know I've already loaded a with zero so instead of loading Y with zero I can just transfer a to Y and that's slight it's a slight improvement because this is a two byte command you know, or instruction and this is a one byte instruction you're basically saving a single byte by doing that it's not you know obviously it's not a big deal but you know these these machines where you're you're pressed for space you'd like to save a byte wherever you can so any anytime you're going to load two or three registers with the same value that's a way to um, save yourself a byte by not just loading each one with the value separately load one of them and then copy to the others okay the other thing is a little more complicated um, a YouTube commenter uh, Sniggleson I hope I'm pronouncing that right but made a suggestion on these chunks of code right here that when you're when you want to add one to the value at a memory location you don't have to go through all of this you can just increment the memory location which I should have realized but I was already thinking in terms of adding and subtracting because of down here where we're adding or subtracting 40 and so I was just I was already in that mode of thinking but if you look at this section right here those five lines all those lines are doing is adding one to head adra and let's let's split this off this section of code so all this is doing right here is adding one to head adra so we can replace that with a single instruction ink head adra that increments the the memory location head adra now we still have to, that takes care of the first four lines we still have to take care of the next three these three right here which is where we just basically are adding the carry since we're adding with we're adding zero with carry we're really just adding the carry to the next memory location to head address plus one well instead of doing that what we can do 
is branch based on that, you know, based on the result of this ink head address. Now there's a problem with that. If you look in the manual, ink does not affect the carry flag. If you look right here um, in the Commodore 128 Programmer's Reference Guide, it has exactly what flags each each instruction affects, and ink does not affect the carry flag. You you would kind of think it would. You'd think, okay, if it if it increments uh, an address and it's FF, you would you know when it increments it around a zero, you'd think it set the carry flag, but it doesn't. But it does set the zero flag, so we can use that when it increments head address. If that rolls over from, if if it rolls over from FF to zero zero zero, that's when we want to increment head head address plus one. That's the same thing that was happening here. If this set the carry flag, that meant it was rolling over from FF to zero zero and therefore we wanted to add that carry to head address. Well we can do the same thing here but we just branch if not branch if not equal a head and then if it didn't branch if it was equal to zero meaning if it did just increment around from FF to zero zero then we can ink head address plus one and then there's our plus to, sh to jump to Okay, so these seven lines here have just been replaced with these three lines, which is a pretty big, you know, pretty big improvement. Um, I I figured up ahead of time right here. If you look at this byte and cycle comparison, here's the here's the seven lines that I had originally that I had done. And here's the three lines that we just replaced it with. Now, if you compare, there's two ways to compare code, basically. One is the number of bytes the code itself takes up. And the other thing is the number of cycles it takes to, to operate, which sometimes more bytes can be faster. So it, you, know, you have to look at both. But um, if you look at the bytes, these seven lines take 13 bytes in, in memory to, to express those lines these three lines only take six so that's a big savings in in the space that the code is going to take up and if you look at the cycles the the millionths of a seconds that it's going the millionths of a second that it's going to take out to execute this code we're going from 18 to 12. so again that's a that's a savings um it's not terribly the the cycle savings isn't terribly important in this case because this is the code that that only runs every time we move the head of the, the snake or, or the worm so um, it doesn't run often enough to be important speed wise but saving that many bytes is a nice a nice improvement alright so let's get these old ones out of the way Here, just do this okay whoops Okay, so now we can do something similar in each of these four sections. Now let's look at the subtract section. Again, we can replace these four lines, and I'm, well, first I'll let's set them aside. Let's set them apart first. We we'll replace the first four lines again with this time decrement head address. Okay. Now we want to decrement head address plus one if that rolled around but this time it's going to be rolling around from zero to ff because we're subtracting one with decrement so the problem with that is this time we can't check for zero because we're going from zero to ff so it's it's going to be zero at the wrong time it's, it's going to be zero basically one turn ahead of where we want to do the next thing so um, maybe maybe an example would be in order here let's say head adra and head adra plus one are currently pointing to um, here, let's do it like this head adra right now equals zero zero and head adra plus one equals zero five so that would be a screen location 
Now, if we subtract head, if we subtract one from head adra, we're going to turn that into FF. And then what we want to do is then turn head adra plus one into zero four. So we want to decrement head adra plus one if head adra just turned from zero to FF, but we don't have a flag that's going to tell us that because going from zero to FF is going to clear the zero flag and any other decrement is going to clear the zero flag except when we go from from one to zero and if we go from one to zero we don't want to we don't want to decrement this because we just want to go from 0501 to 05 you know 0500 so this one isn't going to be quite as elegant because we don't have a flag that we can branch on right here what we're going to have to do instead is check ad check head just just look at head adra first which we can do just by loading it into the accumulator like we did before but we don't have to do any math on it just by loading it into the accumulator it will set the zero flag if it is currently zero and then so then we can branch if not equal ahead and decrement head adra right here or head adra plus one and then put our plus right there that we branched ahead to okay so now let me kind of explain how that's going to work because it is a little different than the than the plus the than the adding version so again let me put back what i had here before head adra if head adra equals let's say oh zero zero and or let, well let's use another let's use a different example let's say it, it currently equals two and head adra plus one equals oh five okay what this is going to do is it's going to load a with head adra which is two and then branch if not equal ahead to the plus which is right down here and then it's going to decrement head adra which makes it one and that's what we want we want to go from 0502 to 0501 now what if head adra is zero what's going to happen is it's going to load a with zero branch if not equal to plus but it is equal to zero loading it with zero just set the zero flag and so it's going to go ahead and do this which decrements head adra plus one down to four and then it'll run this decrement decrement head adra down to ff okay. so those four lines replace these seven lines and it's not quite as huge a savings as the three lines down here because we do have to load a with head adder once but that's still only two bytes and i think two cycles so it's, it's still a big savings over what we did before all right now here now this time we're subtracting 40. so we can't we can't use the decrement here excuse me We can't use we can't decrement the low byte unless we decrement it 40 times, which would be insane. So we're not going to do that. That the first four lines then need to stay the same. But we can still improve on this part a little bit because right here the carry is going to be the the carry will still be set. Let me think. <laughs> um subtract with carry here let's do let me do the add one first and that'll get my brain in the right place for this the first four lines adds 40 to head adra and then if that rolled around to the next page of memory the carry will be set and so then we're just adding the carry to head adra plus one so what we can do is we can branch if carry clear ahead and then increment head adra plus one and then that would be it and then there's where we branch ahead to so let's think about what that's going to do let's well here let's um let's say head adra is f0 let's say and let's say and head adra plus one is 
zero five. So we're seeing you know, we're somewhere in the middle of the screen at zero zero five F zero. And then we do that, and then this happens. We press J to go down, and so the first thing it does is it adds twenty eight to the two eight in hexadecimal to this right here, which is going to give us one eight, and it's going to set the carry flag. Then we branch if carry clear ahead while well, the carry is not clear so it doesn't branch so then we increment head adder plus one increments this to six and that's what we want we want to go from zero five f zero up to zero six one eight which is 40 more and if this was a smaller number like let's say oh two then when it added 40 this would become three uh, a but it would not set the carry flag and so branch if carry clear would branch ahead here and we would not increment head adder plus one which is what we don't which is what we want so all right that just leaves let's see did I yeah I removed everything I need to remove okay um, I'm gonna have to come back to one thing here with the pluses so I don't want to forget about that um, in fact let me go ahead and and take care of that while I'm thinking about it the way the pluses work, you can use up to three pluses, I think, to differentiate different pluses. So I was branching from here, from this plus, I was branching down to to here, you know, to this plus. Well, now that we've stuck another plus in the middle, we need to add another le level of pluses, plusing, basically. Um, and I think you could add it. I think you could add to either set, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say the the um, basically I'm gonna use two pluses for the longer branches and one plus for the shorter internal branches inside of those. So that's gonna go like that. Whoops. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hope that makes sense. Basically, it just means. When we branch here to two pluses, that's going to branch to here rather than just branching to this first plus. And this plus, this branch, if not equal to plus, jumps to this single plus. So you can use, I'm pretty sure you can use one, two, or three. I don't think you can go longer than that with this particular assembler, but um, I wouldn't swear to that. All right, that leaves us one thing to change here, and that's the subtract. So this should be similar to the add. We've got the first four lines that do the subtraction on head adra. Um, <clears throat> now with subtraction, you set the carry first, and then, let's see, if the carry gets cleared, that means you had to borrow. This always confuses me. I don't know why. Um, I'm just not sure if I should branch of carry clear here or branch of carry set. I think I would branch of carry set because that means it didn't need to borrow. So we'll just try it. And then we'll decrement head adra plus one if if the carry was clear, meaning that it did borrow, meaning that we need to decrement the high bite. All right, well, let's try it. Um, so that that's the improvement that um, that's the improvement that Snigelson on YouTube um, gave me the heads up on, um, part of it anyway, and then um, expanded that to the whole the whole section there. So. Um, Wanted to make sure I gave him credit for that. So we'll assemble. Um, now before I did keep track, this the, the code was 240 bytes long before we made that change. Now it's DF, which is, let's see. Uh, 223 bytes, did I say 240? That's what I meant to say. Um, so we shaved 17 bytes 
off the length of the code and we also shaved some cycles off in the section that it wasn't terribly important but um, every little bit helps so um, that's a seven, 17 byte improvement which is about six percent maybe of the code that's not bad for something that didn't take very long um, now we just need to make sure it still works uh, I had a breakpoint so H to go left, K to go up, L to go right, and J to go down. Okay, everything still works. So that branch of carry set was correct. I always, always, uh, I'm not sure on those. All right, and Q still breaks out correctly. Okay, so that takes care of the improvements, and that got us down to I said. 223 bytes yeah all right so what to do next um, I guess the next thing to do will be to check for collisions because if the worm collides with itself or with the edge of the screen with an aster asterisk on the edge of the screen we want to quit um, and eventually quitting will mean more things like displaying a score and stuff like that but for now we just want to you know we, we just want to detect that and stop so um, let's see so we've got our main loop here that waits for a key press does the thing and then jumps back up to the top so I guess inside this main loop then um, is where we're going to want to check for the collision. Um, I'm just thinking exactly where to insert this. I think we can, let's make this a subroutine. Check, or let's just call it collision. hit one semicolon it gives me two that's confusing um, check for collisions all right so how do we want we we've moved let's see we've moved the head and that's going to be a problem because that means we've already printed the head in the memory location. That's why I was saying I need to stop and think about this before we actually do it. Um, so I'm going to think about it some more. Um, we've already moved the head and printed the head, which means now we can't check what was there before we did that. So we're not going to be able to call this from here. We're going to have to call it from here, I believe because here is where we actually print the head so we need to do it before we print the head um, so it's got to come before this store a we don't want to do it in the main loop because we, we call print head several different places we don't have to insert this code or the call to collision you know so far we've got five different times and we could or well, four different times and we could end up with other things if, if we add other keystrokes to do other things possibly so I would say print head is going to be the place to put it um, so I guess it could go anywhere in here but when when print head is called a has the let's see what does a have we don't know what a has at that point it could have a lot of things well I guess at that point a has the value of the key that was pressed and that's why we push store a let's look, key press whoops what I do the current key press um, that's why we that's why we push A on the stack right here because we need to save that because we're not done each, each time we check it against a different thing against a different key 
we need to save it so we can come back and check it again against another key if we've if we've done the thing um, so we push the key press on the stack so this then I think would be where we want to jump to our collision routine I think that's what we'll do we'll, we'll see if that if that works out I think that's gonna work the best because then we come back from collisions from checking collisions then we set we set a and y so that we can and this this right here is the the head character the zero and then the y is just to set the index so that there isn't any any index being added to the indirect value and in head address okay so i think that'll work so we want to then get the value that's at head adra because we've we've moved head adra but we haven't put the head there yet and so head adra right now is going to be pointing to whatever's there before we put the head there um, so we can load a from uh, let's see we're going to have to load y with zero to make sure that we're not um not adding an index to this and then load a from head address comma y because we've always got to we don't want to load the address we want to load the thing the address is pointing to so load a from head address comma y and again like I mentioned in the previous in video 13 I think there is no command like this it'd be nice if there were but there isn't um, all indirect loads and stores and so on are indexed so you just have to, if you, if you don't want it, the index being added, just make sure you set it to zero. Um, okay, so we've loaded A from that. We want to compare A to what? Well, right now there's only two things we could collide with. We could collide with a previous, you know, we could collide with the worm itself. Um, or we could collide with a, a star at the edge of the screen. So I think eventually we're probably going to use a different character for the body of the worm, but for now the the body is just the, you know, the previous at sign. So we'll have to we'll have to change that later if we do. Um let's go up here and define some things like bite head or let's call it head character since that'll separate it from head adra. That's going to be zero that's the the character we're currently using for the head which is the at, at sign bite edge character that is what uh, let's see draw border is that I guess that's 2a is the star the asterisk Um, bite. What else do we need? Um, space. We might want because that's our our empty spaces are all spaces. They're all literally spaces, and that's two zero in hexadecimal. And that's all we've got so far. Those are the only three characters possible on our screen. So. <clears throat> um, Okay, so to check for collisions, we can compare then to head character. And that'll be if I have to put a I have to do it like that, I probably do. Um, so we compare it to the head character, branch if not equal, plus let's see. Sometimes doing sort of Boolean logic, you get you have to stop and think for a bit. Because um, basically, for right now at least, a collision with the worm and a collision with the side are going to result in the same thing. They're both you you die and the game is over. Um, so if we compare it to head character and then c 
compare to I think maybe we can just jump to end game right here and then not jump JMP and then compare to edge character branch of not equal to plus and do the same thing jump end game and then return from this because if we didn't if we didn't match either of those it's not a collision and so we just come back and do our print and so we can return so then end game and, and I'm jumping to end game instead of jump to subroutine end game because I don't want to come back to print head if, if we're, you know I don't want to print it there if we've run into something I just want to stop and uh, end the game however however we're going to end it um, we can put end game here which that's sort of putting my teeth on edge a little bit to have this right in between subroutines but we can move things around later um, score we won't have a score yet because our worm isn't really isn't technically growing yet but we'll get to that so end the game um, That's an interesting one. At this point, we've, we've got our main loop here. And so at this point, we have jumped to subroutine print head. And then jump to subroutine collision and so we're two subroutines deep so and then we've jumped to end games we're still just two subroutines deep but that means if we return here we're not going to return back here because because of this jump well yeah we are going to return back there we're still yeah because we're still going to be two two levels deep um, so there are a couple of possibilities one is um, well one is to manipulate the stack but that's an, uh, that's an ugly situation um, Well, you know that's a that's a really that's a really interesting question. How do you end how do you end the program when you're multiple subroutines deep? I mean, one one way is to break, but I mean that's not that's not the elegant. You know, that's not what you're going to want to do in the finished game. We can do that for now, but um, you know, just as a stopgap until I think of a good way to do it. But um, Ultimately, you're going to want to, like, say, maybe clear the screen, print the score, or print the score up in the corner, or something like that. But then you want to exit the game smoothly, without having to go back through those levels of um, subroutine jumps. So, I think I'll just leave it as a break for right now, and then I'll I'll do some thinking about that and see what what would be the best way to do that. Um, okay leave it at that for now um, so whoops what I do yeah dummy uh, there that's what I want um, 
Okay, we got a problem. Value not defined head character. <clears throat> so I'm doing something wrong with, with my byte um, definitions. Line 12, 13, 14, and then so on. What am I doing wrong? Yes, this is not how you define bytes in this in this assembler. Um, shoot. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Yeah, that okay. The the byte command is just for when you want to insert byte values into your code and it, they're not instructions, they're just byte values. Um so what do I want to do? Uh, let's see. I've got a Okay. You just you just define them as global symbols, I guess. If it's not if it's not an address, I guess that's just the default to define a single byte as a as a symbol. All right, let's try that. So, I'll just take the byte command out. And back here okay that made it happy all right I still got that break in there all right let's see if we can move around still H is not moving me around. Oh, I'm wrong window. H H H H H K K K L L L J J J and now it should break on this next one. There we go. All right. Let's try another one. Running into the side. Uh oh <laughs> running into the side did not break okay so we have to figure out why that is hedge character 2a did I say hedge character? edge character so this worked comparing to head character Branched if not equal to head to this plus and returned. And otherwise jump to end game. But then comparing to this edge character. Or so comparing to head character works, comparing to edge character does not, which I assume means my star is not 2A and I'm figuring something wrong. Um, let's look at let's look at the memory. No, 2A is stars. Hmm. So why is it not? <clears throat> compared to edge character should be 2A branch value should have dead game well it sure seems like that should work um Uh, try it one more time. Oops. 
Okay, let's go down, down this time. No, nope, goes right on. Oh, well, that's interesting. It broke on the second star, but not the first one. Yeah, there's something wrong with that logic there. Like I said, this this kind of logic can be tricky sometimes. Okay, yeah, that was stupid. Um, right here, I compare it to the head character. I say if it's not the head character, jump ahead to the plus. Well, if it's a star, it's not the head character, so it jumps all the way down here. It never even checks it against the head. The the you know, never even checks it against the edge character. So this plus needs to just go to here. And then this plus goes to here. I think that's going to be the problem. Let's uh, let's get rid of that break. I have to keep messing with it. All right, down. It still goes through the first one, but then it breaks on the second one. Hmm. Let's try that. Well, let's look at the code. Let's find this point in the code. We have two jumps close to each other. That should be easy to find. there they are right here okay well there's my problem I would say I'm comparing well no that's not it I don't there's not a branch of equal there I'm looking at the wrong spot um, must be another place where there's two jumps close here we are okay we're loading a from head character comparing it to zero which is the head character which is or loading a from head adra the location pointed to by it comparing that to the head character branching if not equal oh i must not have reloaded this damn it okay there i guess i just didn't reload the code last time sorry about that all right down, 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 down. Okay, it should break out on the next one. There, that's better. All right, let's try it in another direction. Let's try H's. Okay, that works. Try just going to the right. That works. And one more. <clears throat> going up. That works. Okay. And let's just make sure that running into itself still works. Yes. Okay. And even just going like left and then back to the right should work yeah I mean that's that's still running into itself okay so we've worked out the collisions at least with at least the bad collisions let's say um, check for collisions with itself with the edge of the screen we've got those taken care of but there's also going to be collisions with a number because if you remember the to make the game work you have to put a number on the screen somewhere and you have to guide your worm steer your worm to the number run over it and then that makes your worm longer and so we're gonna to have to watch for that collision too um, so we'll, we'll get to that but first of all I would say the next thing we need to do is put a number on the screen okay this, this is going to be a digit between one and nine 
um, be the simplest way to do it, I think. Um, I, th I think that's the way the other game does it. Um, so... Let's see. So, we'll do that. Let's see, where do we want to call that? Well... Let's just write the routine here. Place a num. We'll have to figure out where to call place a num from later, but place a number one through nine in a space on the screen. Because we want to put it in we want to put it on an empty space. We don't want to put it on the worm and we don't want to put it on the edge. So it's got to go on a space somewhere on the screen. Um all right. So we're going to need some randomness here, right? We just want to put it somewhere. We don't want to we don't want to put it in the same place all the time. So we do have randomness already prepared. We already we we call setup rand. So we can get a random number by loading loading a from random anytime we want. So we're we're prepared for that much of it. Um so place a number. There's a thousand locations on the screen. Okay. Some of them, like I say, some of them are going to be off limits because of the, you know, because they already have a star or, or a worm character, so we don't want to put anything there. But basically, we need to select, we need to randomly select a location on the screen. So how do we want to do that? Well, um, I would say in this particular case, we're probably going to want to do it, you know, <laughs> it's easy to get a random number between 0 and 255 because that's what you're going to get from the you know that that's what you're going to get from the um random register um and if you if you you know you, you can also run that through um various randomization uh, routines you can use it as a seed for a random routine to get better, more reliable randomness if you want to. Um, we may end up doing that in this one. I didn't do it in the previous programs, but that may be something worth um, going, you know, taking a look at in this one. Um, but that's still going to give you values 0 through 255, um, which doesn't divide evenly into 1,000 with what we're doing here. Um, If you think of the screen, you know this. The screen is a thousand spaces. It's close to one k. It's not, you know, because a k is ten twenty four. But if you think of the screen as as a thousand spaces, then it's basically four sections. You have um, o four hundred to o four ff, and then o five hundred to o five ff, o six hundred to o six ff. And 0700 to 07FF, except it doesn't go all the way to 7FF because it's 24 less than that, whatever it is, you know, DC or whatever, wherever the last one actually is. So you can't really say, you know, one one possibility would be to say, okay, give me a number from 1 to 255, or let's say, let's say 00, 00 to FF. And then give me another number from 4 to 7, from 04 to 07, and I'll put those two together, and I'll have a random number in anywhere between 400 and 7FF. That would work. The problem is you don't want this top batch. So the question then is, do you do you do that and then just throw them out if you happen to get one in that top 24 that isn't on the screen throw that out and get a new one or do you try to have your random routine restrict itself to only the actual screen locations um, you're gonna do if, if you try to have it restrict itself you are gonna do more calculating um, but 
don't know. It's it's an interesting question. Um, I've actually been thinking about it a little bit, and I hadn't really come up with a with a perfect answer, and so I'm just kind of talking through it here again. I think that is probably what I would what I would do. So let's say we do that. Let's just move that down where we can keep an eye on it. Let's say we load A from random. Okay. And that's going to let's say that's going to be our low byte of our of our address. In fact, let's let's load that into X. I don't think at this point we would be messing with I don't, I don't think we have to worry about messing with X or Y at this point. We don't know where we're going to call this from, so we may have to change that, but we'll we'll deal with that when the time comes. And then let's load A with random. Okay. Um and so now we have two bytes, one to be our high byte and one to be our low byte. The high byte we need to trim down to four, five, six, or seven. Okay. The way to do that is going to be to and it with, well, let's see here. Four, five, six, and seven is four digits, right? And so if we end this with um, zero three, then we strip off the top six bits is what we're doing there. And the bottom two bits then are going to have a value zero, one, two, or three. Then we can add four to that and end up with four, five, six, or seven, if that makes sense. And we can add four by oring it with 04, which is a little faster than clearing the carry, adding four. We just we'll just or it with four. Because what's gonna happen is we we get a random number from here. Let's say it's let's look at this in binary. Let's say we get 101010. We end it with three, which is zero 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 one one. We'll and those two together, and that's going to come on, get over here. That's going to result in zero 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 one zero, which is two. And then we're going to or that with 4, which is 0, 0, 0, 0. Do I have enough zeros? Yeah. 1, 0, 0. And that's going to give us 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, which equals 6. So 0 becomes 4, 1 becomes 5. 2 becomes 6 and 3 becomes 7. You're, you're adding 4. We're just doing it by oring with 4 because that's a faster um, when you're when you're adding a, a single bit basically. We're, we just want to turn this bit on and we know it wasn't already on because we'd already cleared it with this hand and so sometimes you can get away with that. Okay so we'll or it with 4. So now X has our low byte which can be anything from 0 to FF. A has our high byte, which is four, five, six, or seven. So we have an address in screen space unless it's too much, unless it's too high. And if it's too high, that would mean that would mean A is over seven, or no, sorry, that would mean A is seven and X is over whatever the end of screen memory is, which um Let's see. Um, where is the end of screen memory? I guess. Two 
255 minus 24 spots is 231. E7. Okay, so anything over 7E7, we want to just get another one. We want to just forget that random number. That one's not on the screen. Let's just get another one. All right. Like I said, I'm not sure this is going to be the best way to do this, but this is the way we're going to do it right now and see how it goes. So first of all, we want to compare A with 7 and branch if not equal ahead because if it's not 7 we don't have to worry about what the low byte is and then so we'll get we'll come back to that in a second but then we need to compare x with what did i say e7 okay if it's greater than e7 or actually, I think we, we need to make it E6 because, well, for one thing, the whole bottom line is stars, so we never we never want to put one there anyway. Um, compare it to E6, and then, now the question is, is this going to set the carry, or I always have to stop and think. Well, I'm just going to have to look at the book. Compare. A minus M. Okay, so it takes the accumulator value, subtracts the the argument. So if the accumulator is greater than the argument, then I believe the carry will be. I still don't know. <laughs> I have to look at the different part of the book. Compare instructions. Well, that wasn't very helpful. Um, maybe it's here. Branched in. No. Might be a different book that gives you really good instructions on that, but we will just do an example. Um, okay, we'll just use C100 as a place to put our example. Let's load A with um, FE. Whoops. A, C100, load A, FE, and then compare with our E6. Okay. So if we put a break then at C100 and go to it. All right, load A with FE and then step, compare it with a smaller number and the carry gets set. Okay. Let's try it again with load A1. Now this time we're subtracting a larger number. I think that should clear the carry a little better anyway. So now the, the carry is already set from last time, but we will step it and then step. Oh, the carry's, oh, sorry. Okay, so now it's comparing it and then it cleared it, yeah. Okay, so if the carry's set, it means the accumulator was larger than the number we compared to. So coming back to our code then. <clears throat> carry set if um, if location is off screen. All right. If it's if it's larger than E6, if if it's o, if it's larger than 07 e6, which is what we, which is where we'd be right here, um, <clears throat> then that's then we're off the screen. So branch 
if carry clear ahead otherwise jump back up to place a num and basically start over get a different number okay. or a different pair of numbers and then our plus goes here so if we jump down to here that means we've got an okay number that is an, is in our screen somewhere alright the next thing is going to be now we know it's on the screen but we don't know that it's clear so we have to find out if it's clear um, Okay, that's going to be interesting. We're going to need something like head address. We can't use the head address because that's for, you know, that's keeping track of the head of our worm as it moves around. We're going to need another address like that that we can use as an indirect pointer to where this number you know this the location we're working on right here um, so along with head address we want um, rand address let's call it and we'll put that at FC because head address is using FA and FB address for head of worm. And FC to FD then will be address of random spot for number. All right. So Let's call in the fact let's let's not call it rand adra, let's call it num adra. I'm getting tired of saying adra, but I, what else are you gonna do? Um, okay. So X is our low byte of this. X is our zero through FF. So we store X into num adra. We'll store A into numadra plus one. Okay. And then Okay, so that sets up our address, our address that we just created, which is going to be somewhere between four hundred and seventy-six, um, is in numadra now, and so we can use that as our We'll have to load y with zero. We can use that as our indirect pointer then to get whatever is at that location currently. All right. And then basically we just want to know is it a space? Is is the thing at that location a space? Because if it, if it's not, we need to find a different location. So, if it's not, branch if not equal, back up to place a num and start over finding another location on the screen. If it is a space, then we need to pick a number and put there. Okay. All right. So, how do we pick a number between 1 and 9? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> I mean, in, a, in another language, in a language like C or Perl or something like that, you would do a modulus 9. I mean, it, there's nothing to it. You do it without thinking about it. In assembly language, you think, okay, how, you know, you, how do you use masking of bits or something like that? Um, 
How do you get a random number between 1 and 9? And get them and get them all equally. That's the thing. How do you how do you try to make sure that you get them all equally? Um, one to eight is easy. In fact, I'm temp I'm thinking for temporary because I'm over an hour here already. I think we'll just do one to eight, but we'll have to come back later and improve on that so it can be one to nine. But I think we'll do one to eight so that we can actually see a number on the screen before we quit this time. Um, so we're going to load A with another random number. We're going to um, mask it with 0, 7. That's going to clear the top 5 bytes, leave the bottom 5 bytes, so that we have um, numbers from 0 through 7 as our, you know, as our possible values there. Now, we don't actually want, well, we do, but we don't actually want a digit from 1 to 8. What we really want is the screen codes for the characters of 1 through 8, because we want to see the character on the screen. You know, we want to see the number on the screen. So we'll go back to our book here, um, if I can remember where, approximately where these are. Um, yeah, here we go. Screen display codes for the numbers, for the digits, are... So one starts at 49, which is uh, which in hexadecimal is three one. So we want to add that to you know they're they're in a row fortunately. So if we take the number that we if we take our random number from zero through seven and we add 49 to it, we're going to get from 49 to 56, and that's going to give us our our digits from one to eight. Um, so we'll come back here. Clear the carry, add with carry. Um, th there may be a way to improve on this later too, but that's going to be 3 1 in hexadecimal. I'll put quotes around it to say we're adding the character value of 1. And then we're storing that into num addra, comma y, and returning. Okay, let's get this out of the way. All right, now let's stop and think about this. We got a random. It, we branched back up if we weren't happy with the spot. If either, if either it was off the screen or it was not a space, we branched back up. So. Otherwise, we get a random number, mask the mask the top five bits, so we just have the bottom three to give us a number from zero through seven. Add that with the carry cleared to 31 to give us a digit from one to eight. Um, we'll fix that later and then store it at the location and return. All right. So where do we want to call place a num from? Basically, what well, we're going to want to call it once at the very beginning, right? Basically after the after the board is laid out. So we can actually just call it right here after place worm after we get the the head of the worm placed. We've already drawn the border, so everything is on the screen that's going to be on the screen to start. And we can call place num. Is that what I called it? I already forgot. Place a num. Jeez. Uh, poor memory. All right. So we'll call place a num there. The other place we'll end up having to call it is after we write the routine that catches when the worm collides with a number, makes the worm longer, then we need to place another number somewhere else so we'll we'll have to call it a second time from another location but that's no problem that's that's why it's a subroutine so we can call it from another place now the thing I don't like about this is it's possible 
especially as the worm gets longer. It's possible that this method of just getting another random number, if you don't like the first one, if the first one doesn't work, just get another one and then get another one and get another one until you get one that works. The longer the worm gets, the more the screen gets full, the, the more times this is going to loop before it happens to run across a number. I don't suppose that's going to be an issue. It's not that much code, but I think there, you know, there might be a better way to do that. There might be a more elegant way to handle that. Um, but that's a quick, that's a quick and dirty way to do it for now. That'll get us finished here, and we'll we'll deal with more elegant versions of it next time. Um, okay. Do we have any breakpoints set? clear that thing. Let's go. Alright. Uh, I did not put a number on the screen. Oh, I did it again. I gotta load it. Okay, there's our number. Put a 5 on the screen. Do it again. There's a 5. There's a 5. I'm getting a little concerned about the repeated 5s. There's a five. Uh oh. Might have an issue. Might not have very good randomness. I I had a feeling that might be an issue, although I'm not sure why five keeps coming up in particular, but um We did see that um now when I run into the number it should not cause a collision because we haven't yeah, we haven't written that part of the code yet, but um There's a five. There's a five. Okay, well, we're going to have to figure that out. Why are we getting five every time? Why is our... It is moving around. That's the interesting thing. It is It is moving around, but I don't... It seems to be staying in the same section of the board, I guess you could say. Kind of in the... Kind of in the middle... Um the third section, if you divide it into fourths from top to bottom, it's kind of in the third fourth that it keeps showing up. It keeps showing up kind of in that section. I don't think it's ever gone above or below that. So we do have an issue with our randomness um, that we'll have to figure out. We may have to write a real, a real randomness routine rather than just grabbing that number and calling that good enough. So yeah definitely an issue there so let's make a note um, next time we don't have to do these things next time fix randomness a real random well it'll be pseudo random number generator we'll have to write there is one of course in the Commodore's operating system but we're trying to write all this from scratch, so we'll write a we'll write a real pseudo random number generator and get better random numbers from that, um, and then we'll deal with making the worm grow when it hits a number, and keep track of the length of it so that we have a score, and that's what we'll that's what we'll be working on. So um, hope this one was interesting, and uh, thank you for watching, and hope to see you back next time.